Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop, the Empire of Dirt. I would clean up, but got to throw them OCD types of bone once in a while. Here, today, with us, the Amos Moses ha uh, Harbor Fart via China uh, Fork U meter. Let's see if she's any fucking good at all. Apparently, it's uh, ETL listed. Cat 3, 600 volt. Comes in its own branded, no less, man's hand clutch. And Cat 3 now. So, Cat, essentially, this has been tested to not explode in your hand with a um, 6,000 volt cert, if it's 600 volt cat, okay, yeah. 6,000 volt uh, spike, voltage spike. So, this would be good for measuring up to, say, motors, uh, VFDs, nothing at the utility level, but. Uh, hardwired stuff, uh, bus bars, that kind of thing. So pretty high energy level. That's a one-time failure event. Uh, it will not blow up in your hand. Okay, so that's the Cat 3. Cat 2 would be a lower rating. It's You can use it for checking stuff that plugs in, essentially. Uh, Cat 4 would be uh, distribution level stuff. You know, stuff where you, very likely you're going to need to wear the Homer Simpson hazmat suit. Anyway, so... This is a 6,000 count meter, which means uh, it will count up to 6,000 and then I'll have to roll over. So, okay, initial impression, this is a very lightweight meter. It's quite stiff, but it's very, very light. It doesn't feel particularly robust. And uh, problem here, the, the battery cover fastener is not caged and uh, she already fucked right off on me. Lost it already, just in the first 15 seconds so now we'll get the battery in here and we'll have a go at her it's got a comes with a thunderbolt magnum somebody's nickname in college no doubt yeah we'll get that in there get that on there and turn it on the switch is mushy however the beeper is nice and loud Takes quite a while to come up to zero ohms. Let's let's check that out with a. No, you get what you pay for. There are no free rides in meters. So you're you're not gonna spend thirty bucks and expect to get a Fruk uh, eighty seven. But what we're looking at here is if this passes the minimum viable standard. Let's turn that on to. Yeah, you see how fast that comes up. So now when you're making measurements, you're going to be waiting for this every time you make a measurement. All right, we'll get the test leads in here. This is where good meters really shine. Nice, flexible silicone jacketed and very small conductors, many, many strands. So it's very, very flexible. That's the, when you buy a crappy meter, you automatically get crappy leads. These aren't that horrific but they are uh, they're PVC so they're not silicone and they're quite stiff so what you got to watch out for is it doesn't break right here and you get erroneous readings consistently so what I'll do here oh wow okay there we go a little bit tight that's a good thing though uh, we'll turn on our uh, our source here, just take some measurements. Just compare the two here. There we go. Hurt so good. Uh, no, hurt so good. Got the leads right. Right on the money. So we'll go with a triangular waveform. Way off. Now we'll go with a square waveform. And we're on the money. We'll just move that around. update rate on this guy quite a bit faster this is probably four times the price though this is what the 117 and the 115 is minimum viable for I would say for HVAC and, and any kind of industrial electricity uh, wrangling so that's okay but it's not working on the 
on the triangular waveform it's all cattywampus so that's one of the differences this is true RMS so root mean square it's doing some this is doing an approximation and this is actually measuring the frequency and the voltage of weird waveforms do you really need that well you really need that if you're doing any kind of carrier wave signal like uh, variable frequency drives if you're kind of if you're doing audio stuff you wouldn't use this type of meter but you'd also need root mean square it's a nice feature to have do you really need the root mean square it means the meter is going to cost you an extra hundred bucks so you got to decide what you're going to be measuring if you're going to be measuring lots of stuff that has oddball frequencies that you need to know what the carrier frequency is then definitely <clears throat> now despite being I'll just double check this here despite being not root mean square being a mathematical approximation it does seem quite accurate on the uh, Hertz here we're into one kilohertz and we're square wave we're right in there let's try something that you'd see on our drive something like 16 kilohertz so that's actually fantastic a little bit slower to update you see how slow that is to update compared to to that one so that poses a little problem when you're troubleshooting and it's kind of jumping around. The other thing we're missing is the analog scale here. So if there's a blip, you don't see the that 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 little blip on the analog range. Little feature here that I'm not quite sure I like or I might grow to really like it is when you change the dial position, it beeps at you. Now the continuity checker I do like the continuity checker, even though it's a little bit slow. If we can do this, where are we here? We're looking for continuity. Function. There, function. Very, very loud. Just perfect in an industrial setting. I always find I'm struggling to hear the fluke. Big, big difference. This guy, nice and loud. There's no mistake in that. Okay, I got her in continuity check and I'm gonna plug this right into the wall, see if I can damage this. We get her to blow up or if it's uh, designed well enough so it doesn't kill us all. Eh, eh, engage your safety squints and uh, fuck me, put a little hair around that. Ah, oh, there we go. Nope, smarter than it looks. Okay, function. AC 120 perfect and I like the fact that I'm fucking up and it's not blowing up in my face that's that's a nice feature now we got her connected up to the power supply we're going to change a function here to DC and we're going to I uh, just just move your head a little get rid of that glare there you go <laughs> okay Sorry for driving you nuts here. I know it's a pain in the ears. Okay, there we go. Oh, also. Let me see, DD. You gotta throw him a bone. And we'll change this a little bit. Of course. Now the voltage is updating nice and quick. So that's odd that the current wouldn't update as quickly. Yeah, we're right on the money there right down to the low low end so let's bring that up I'll show you what the count does when we hit 6,000 you're gonna see some serious shit what the fuck oh there we go okay see it just clicked over diode check in order to get that to fire wrong polarity that's how you can check to see if you got your LED installed correctly there we go just faintly faintly lights up so that is not a very high uh, let's see here 2 volts 3.2 okay in the diode check let's have a look at in comparison what the fruit is running at and in the continuity check 2.4 volts and then the diode check 
2.4 volts. So it's actually outputting in the diode check uh, more voltage. Huh. Let's get this guy. I wonder if this uh, this guy will fire it. A very, very faint. Just barely discernible. I would have thought uh, that would be quite a bit higher. Oh, my aching yellow bias. <laughs> you don't know until you know, and there you go, now you know. Nice little feature here is a microamp scale, of course. For AC, we use the pickle fork. I'm not sure if it works for DC. No, it doesn't work for DC. So there's no, there is no uh, DC current measurement except for the microamps. So there's milliamps, but microamps is if you're looking at watch batteries, if you're looking at if there's some sort of uh, bleed or uh, uh, suck, you know, uh, parasitic loss out of a battery, you can check that out. Or, you know, on a PCB board or a confuser or something, that uh, real-time clock battery, you can see how much that's drawn. It's a nice feature to have. It actually comes in quite handy when you're testing little things. Yeah, that's dead nuts on the money. And we can go right up to overload. We can go right up to, well, 6,000 microamps. So very limited reading there because there's not an alternate input that's fused. You can only go up to six milliamps. So very, very limited, but still good, good in some cases. Good to have it. It's a nice feature on such a cheap little meter. Let us now check <laughs> the temperature of the thermocouple, excuse me. Choking on my tongue tangulation. Get that right in there. And that cold hands, warm heart. Uh, now, can we change that from C to F? Yeah, there we go. Much better. So, we're going to test the old pickle fork out, amper, am amperage wise. Let's give her what for. Oh, we're back. Looks like it's right on the money. I'll show you a wee trick here, which is good to know. What this is doing is measuring the magnetic flux of the current moving in the conductor. So what we can do is if it's too low, if the, if the current is too low to actually measure, we can get a more accurate reading by increasing the magnetic flux. How do we do that? Well, you think of a, an electromagnet. If you want a stronger electromagnet, you give it more wraps of wire. That gives it more magnetic flux. So what do you think is going to happen when we give it an extra wrap of wire? Huh? Huh? Or five or ten. <clears throat> Two wraps in there, we get twice the current that we normally show. So if you want to, that's a little trick. If it's too low to measure with one of these pickle forks, what you can do is just give her more wraps. Now that we're in, pleasantly surprised no real crustiness on the board itself even that the pickle fork while it feels chintzy it's quite robust and it doesn't split apart it's been glued or epoxied or something some interesting features going on in there we have air gap uh, sensing coils at different locations throughout the pickle fork here so there's some fancy calculations going on on the in the brain box in order to actually uh, get what kind of amperage you're getting out of this thing so with it not being true rms and with it being a pickle fork not a closed loop it's all going to be approximative so if you're looking at something that's 400 hertz or 50 hertz you're gonna get a different reading because it's really tuned in the mathematics of the thing to 60 hertz looking at the board this has been built or uh, engineered by someone or a company that knows how to make cheap meters and it's actually not nearly as crusty as i would have suspected uh, one thing i do not like here is where the probes go in it's only on the one side so we are cantilevering this I uh, could very easily break these. Of course, you're not supposed to leave your leads in while you transport it. You only put your leads in because it's connected directly to the board. That's the case with most meters. But if you get a higher end meter, this will be 
connected to the board on both sides so there's there's more mechanical stability there we see there's no input no big fuse on there slow blow fuse on there because there's no direct uh, current shunt amperage reading no current measurement we have a a bunch of uh, mauves here and oh that could be that was actually could be a diode no they're uh, PTCs so positive temperature coefficient these are resistors right as the as the more current goes through them they get hotter and hotter the resistance goes up it reduces the uh, amount of current going through it on the high voltage ride we see we have a through hole component here and then a bunch of uh, in series resistors and that's to allow it to to withstand high voltages that's why they don't just put the one resistor in there there's a bunch in series that's to get that gap uh, far enough away now there are no routered slots for high voltage uh, high voltage isolation we can see to the ground plane here um, yeah quite close on the high voltage side but that is uh, high impedance after these guys there's the brain box there we have this, that same shape of resistor but it's um, surface mount there's a word for that package and it escapes me for the moment got a couple of operational amplifiers up here here's the speaker nice loud speaker the wires going out through here is uh, for a light and this is the chicken stick uh, non-contact voltmeter which you can't trust with your life but people do it's just confirmation that the power is off here uh, non-contact wise not much going on in there uh, there's the LCD big long zebra strip here and there's no way to get in there and clean that out so once you start losing digits or segments of this LCD uh, you know she's hoopa juped and you throw her right in the fuck it bucket it's priced that way anyway we're gonna go ahead and have a look at the pickle fork the recently discovered shop x-ray uh, thanks to that big beautiful well I don't know his father but I do know his brother big Clive uh, put me onto this shop x-ray works a treat trouble is finding all the bits and bobs which you'll never do so we just look for the salient bits which is this thing's cool as frick man look at this so sandwiched in three layers so the, the well you can see here so the inner uh, clamshell goes right into the outer and it's sound and then this has been glued so that's how you're getting that uh, how how stiff the thing doesn't want to come apart <laughs> no match for the shop x-ray well we see the inductors and this is this is cute here's the air gap okay so the air gap goes through here but if you if you bring it around it's sort of this oval all the air gaps kind of sort of line up so that's what we're doing where the magnetic field through this uh, through this here wire this is the stand-in wire it goes around like so and we're picking that up through these inductors that go around like so uh, very very clever that's what you get for your 35 bucks is it uh it, it, accuracy wise it seems pretty damn good uh robustness wise it doesn't feel like it's gonna last in somebody's tool bag but I mean you're kind of getting what you pay for you look at the price of her uh not a bad little rig just to have on your workbench you're gonna take this to work well then yeah go ahead but if you want to look like a pro chances are you're not gonna buy this this is a good secondary meter i would say thanks for watching keep your dick in a vice Now you watch some WebMD motherfucker is going to comment down here. What you have is a terminal case of spastic baculum with a side of fibromyalgia. <laughs> what I got is a terminal case of humanity. Ain't nobody gets out alive. I knew that mug would come in handy.